Lekken, thank you ever so much. That's fantastic. Thank you. Can you first of all just tell us how this amazing ensemble that you have, these talented artists, how did you all come together? Um, I've been working with uh, Miss Luxmore, our musical director, for many years. And um, the musician on the bandstand, I made an album with some of them. Uh, they are Midland based. And uh, Olutai, who I've been working with through the connection with Miss Luxmore. Lovely. So that's why, how we come together. Okay, and Yoruba and Sonnets, we, we went on a journey. So we had Africa, Nigeria, and then of course we had the English village as well as other parts. Where did this idea come from and why? Um, Yoruba Sonnet is an idea of um, the spoken word of the priest, the Yoruba scholars, the academic uh, Yoruba people. Um, they are called the Babalao. And um, one time I curated an exhibition called 16 Pieces. And I went to Nigeria, I recorded over 150 Babalao scholars. And uh, we brought the text here. In order for the text to be available to the audience, the idea is um, when they recite their incantation, um, poetry, prose, whatever, you won't understand it if you don't speak Yoruba. So in order to share it with the audience, me and Olu and um, Kate Luxmo, particularly me and Olu spend a long time, over five years, unpacking one chapter. Wow. What you've just had is just one chapter. It's 16 chapters major. So you have 16 times 16, then you have 256 chapters of the chapters. In the verses, you can have up to 10,000 verses. So it's like Mabarata and the Indian epic, whatever. So me and Olu just said, okay, let's just see how we can unpack. So what we are doing is interpretation, not exactly how they've recited because it will take many, many years. So we managed to do one chapter with 11 verses. Thank you. Is that right? 12. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Teru, are you part orator, part mystic? You part, so you're taking us on this journey. What's your role in this? And you're part dancer and body popping. Loved it. Is there a mic? Can we get, can we get him a mic, please? Here we are. Okay. Come this way, please. Um, so, the, as, as, um, Lecon articulated really well. We have been working on, on an adaptation of it. So I've, I've been interested in comparative uh, philosophies for a long time, particularly the Hindu uh, and also the um, Taoism uh, and, and the Kabbalah, the, the Jewish mystic. So I'm very interested in those uh, metaphors for the human experience. Mm. And when I was talking with Lecon um, and his particular uh, strand of Ifa, it resonated with me because we were looking at metaphors for the Yoruba experience of being. Mm. And so uh, part of the ad adaptation is using some of the Yoruba uh, worldviews and translating them into a kind of contemporary and very specifically British context because uh, there are translations that are in American context uh, and of course with the American context is the whole issue of, um, of people who are enslaved mm -hmm. and therefore they, they have the emancipation of that and so the recovery, whereas we're coming from a different strand and perspective, it's a, it's a kind of post-colonial uh, a, a perspective. Um, so uh, my, 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 my uh, discipline is in performance. Right. I'm a performance philosopher darling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and um, so that's my PhD was in, in, in that. So I'm, I'm very particularly interested in the, the relationship between the body, space, technology, and what that means for us, what kind of things we afford and can gain, but also what we're losing okay. as a result. And so, yeah, so that's what really where, where that comes to. That's again. lovely. So this is my final question, and then I'm going to open the floor. There is a, a cards going round, and the reason we, obviously, we're funded by the Arts and Humanities Research Council, I'm asking for feedback, and feedback is important because then we can make a stronger case for more funding and more projects like this, hopefully. So please do scribble down your comments, constructive feedback as well. Kate. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. 
Secretary. <laughs> Kate, as director, how does one begin to put this ensemble, these different history, these pieces together? And I appreciate you're only working with kind of one chapter. Yeah. How, how does that creative process begin and where do you start and where do you take it? Um, I think that um, myself and Lekon have known each other a long time, we've worked together a long time. So we've spent a lot of time understanding one another. We're also married. <laughs> so that I helps. Guess, <laughs> and, and, and we have children. So you have to learn one another's cultures. You have to uh, understand some of where people are coming from. So, uh, you know, I dragged him down to the southwest of England to live for some time. I'm also really interested in my folk kind of heritage, growing up in the middle of nowhere in, in the southwest. Um, folk music was really important. So um, it's about, I think, anything, any collaboration is about, it just comes from your connection to one another. And it comes from your connection to yourself and where you come from sometimes mm -hmm. and what you feel, you know. Um, and so on this stage, for me, um, that's where we start. I, I write charts, yes. Um, we, Lecon uh, explains the groove, but everyone on the stage is of such a... A level as a musician that um, very little needs to be communicated. It's left to working it and feeling it, to get it together. Um, and I think that's really, really important. And I think it's often very overlooked coming from classical music. It's, that was a that was an area that I started in, and it's very overlooked there. So it's all about what we share, what we have in common. I thought there was um, a lovely bleeding and blending of the classical, the folk, and the popular, and there was a breaking yeah. out of, of some interesting yeah. boundaries there. Yeah. Let's Thanks. have questions, comments, conversations for all the band, uh, including Leck and Kate and Dr. Taylor as well. The floor is open. Julie. I'm yeah. just going to repeat that. Yes. The mic. Is it at all possible to characterise the different traditions that have come together in the piece? Yeah. We could all do that. Can we, we have the mic? <laughs> yes. the, you'll notice inside the, um, the music, there was reggae music. Uh, there was uh, music from New Orleans. Um, some kind of almost contemporary uh, Afrobeat which is kind of a, a contemporary version of that. Um, the folk English song, that very specific folk English song, which was really poignant, particularly with that, as Lecon articulated for that verse, uh, where you have this person, the, the verse is about averting death, but this other person is condemned. So there's an, we played with that kind of paradox there. Um, I think those are the kind of more obvious ones, but there are some subtle ones in terms of the way in which the Yoruba uh, sonics, the way we tried to make it um, in our adaptation, we tried to look at the context today in a contemporary, con so contemporary British context. So, uh, and that's transcultural. So in, in one, in one a couple of the movements I, I had, Fairly, I took some, some balletic movements, and then I went into sort of Bhutto, Japanese Bhutto. There was some Tai Chi in there. I did a little bit of capoeira and, 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 and hip hop. So there's a, a lot of, y'all see the capoeira? You all see that again? Yeah, I did a little bit, you know what I mean? I didn't do the kind of like, you know. Um, uh, and so, so the, the statement there is that, one of, that we are all transcultural in our, in our different ways. And, uh, and this was a, a chance to express that. But I don't, I don't know if other people want to sort of... Yeah, does anybody else want to pitch in on that? Maybe one of the <laughs> musicians? Yeah. Characteristics, transculturalism? Yeah. You Tom, should you say something? Tom. <laughs> Can we take that one? Great, thank you. Tom is Jewish. Okay. <laughs> this could go anywhere then. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, especially with this uh, ensemble and band, um, there's a big thing about all these different styles that we're covering and stuff. Um, a real deep thing is like the rhythmic relation of pretty much all modern music that we've got now and how rhythmically you can kind of trace everything back to, uh, mainly to West Africa. It's pretty much like most of our modern ideas of how rhythm comes together is there so like even this ensemble is full of completely different people from different backgrounds um, like Lekon said I have Jewish heritage but still even then the traditional music in that part of the world still draws heavily on rhythmic 
kind of fundamentals from uh, West Africa. Mm -hmm. So like we have a shared language, which is quite interesting. Um, once you kind of, I don't know, you kind of forget about uh, overall culture with the music. So it's interesting because once you delve into each individual piece, may it be a folk piece from Dorset, yeah. yeah, or a, Yoruba, a Yoruba kind of Afrobeat thing with the sonnet mm. um, translated. You stop thinking when you just play the music. The music's kind of like just a kind of um, it's like a omni language between them all. So that's yeah. that's the shared thing. So it's like through this, you can like search different cultures, and we have like the we also have like the reggae and the West mm. Indian stuff mm -hmm. and stuff, and it's all it's all there. It's all like a shared culture all in one. But the actual musical language is kind of like shared Absolutely. quite evenly, which is, that's like a really nice thing. So we can talk, even if we didn't speak the same language, we could speak on stage. It's my you know? yeah. That's <laughs> lovely. I like that. Yeah, Omni language, really. brotherhood, and musical languages. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. So lots of references to nature. Is that unique to? Right. <laughs> I'll try. Um, well, Ifa is the word of God, and Bible is the word of God. Quran is the word of God. So all form of way of life is is a way of life to the Yoruba people, not a religion. So of course. The, everything that God created went through divination. Uh, ori, water, everything. He says in the text that everything has a reference in the Odu of Ifa from Ejiogbe or Yakumiji, Worimiji, Odimiji. So even animal, head, uh, arm, uh, plant, uh, and Osoin. So Ifa is encompasses the whole architecture of this universe. It's, so everything is nature, really. And from nature to, if you take a um, tablet that we were taking, it's from homeopathy, right? And they package it into capsule, into lollipop. They make it contemporary and contemporary and contemporary. So that is Ifa, is the science of, the problem is that the code that is written down, not many people understand it. So for you to understand theology properly, you have to come to this kind of school, college, and you go into if you want to become a pastor. So if I is like that, you have to study. So everything in it is nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just, 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 to, just to, add to add to that um, um, exposition, the... Um, the way in which the Yoruba uh, articulated and investigated their surroundings uh, had, we, called, we, we came up with a term called poetic intelligence. So, um, and Yoruba is an expensive language, not like English, which got, you've got loads of words for one particular term. You know, in Yoruba you've got maybe one word, but then a lot of the kind of emphasis is in nuance. And Could body you just give language. us a quick example? Um, what do you mean by that? A quick example, please. So, ori is one. Okay. You know, you could have ori as a kind of, and an ori. Yeah. So, ori, ori, ori is the head. Ori is the share button. Ori, you didn't see it. Yeah. Ori, you seen it. Yeah. Thank you. And it's the same. Okay. And so, so what happens is what you what you get is you, you what you get is a, is is a, a very expensive language that has nuances of emphasis, um, and the the and the same is with the observation. So things like the elephant, of course, the elephant is in a, in, a, in a biological context. It's an elephant is belongs to a particular you know species, and and it, it's kind of codified as an object or a living object. Whereas with the Yoruba culture, we see it as something which is a living being that asked to come into existence and has its own relationship with the universe. It's not some, you know, and so therefore, 
so the kind of idea of, of the animate universe, the moving universe, the kind of, you know, when, when you see a flower, we didn't make the flower, it just has its own relationship to the universe in being. And so in the Yoruba language it has that. So it's more of a philosophy and a way of life than a religion in the strictest sense as we would understand it here. In that sense, it's quite similar to uh, Hinduism or Buddhism. It's a similar kind of thing. So, so animals and nature feature as a way to articulate internal experience. Last couple of questions or comments. Last couple of gentlemen. So the mountain not having any sorry, I've got to speak on the, the mountain not having any hands or feet, but the water being permitted to carry. Can we just elaborate on that, please? Okay, so, so um, I'll do it from the point of view of my experience because I'm interested in it philosophically. Um, it goes back to what I was saying earlier about um, see, if we see the mountain and we say, well, a mountain can't hang on. A mountain can't talk. You know, how can a mountain ask? And certainly, how can a mountain be annoyed because it's got any feet? So there we get into literal, you know, it's a similar kind of thing of like, well, the God created the world in seven days, seven 24 hour slots, you know. Mm, yeah, well, I'm not sure that's what was meant when it was first written. In that context, there's a kind of metaphor and a poetic metaphor that refers to somebody who is gargantuan and it has an ego, is, can be sedentary, cannot move, can, can end up not moving. And the idea of water is that, um, first, the first talked about it, water has no enemy. You don't know the, the, the song? And, and, and the idea that on one level, if what is good for the, for the um, leopard may not be good for the gazelle. And so there's this kind of balance that has to be struck. And one of the, one of the things that I've learned with Yoruba culture is that, and traditional Yoruba culture, is that the value system isn't good or bad. It's a very dualistic notion of good, bad. What is seen as good is what's in balance. So if something's too good, that can be seen as bad. If something's too bad, that's it. it's about balance. And balance with everything. So consequently, and this is why the whoop, that's why the, you'll notice in, the, in, the, in this particular order, the first one, there's a lot of womb uh, metaphors because the concept is that the womb holds all. And the womb holds both male and female. The phallus just wants to go. But the womb holds. And so this is, so it's the idea of balance. And that's really what those two, those two lines are coming, particularly coming, Particularly as a jewelry, which means it supports two, supports both. As it, as it emerges from nothing into something, its emergence has to be in balance. Whether you're a flower, a mountain, a human being, or, you know, okay. whatever. Yeah. Would any of our other fellow artists or musicians the, would contribute to any of the, qu the questions or comments that have gone thus far? Would you like to? <laughs> You don't have to, but I'm giving you the opportunity. No? We're okay? All right. So the last question, who or comment, who would like to take that? Anybody? Creative multilingualism is about language, it's about culture, it's about understanding the differences that make us, it's about, as we saw tonight, myths, ideologies, it's also about different forms of expressing that creatively, as we've seen wonderfully through Leka Babalola and the band. Can we once again thank them and thank you all for coming. Thank you.